and it's got a freaking hog on it. There's a bunch of drowned rats underwater. I teared up when I opened this box when I saw this. What's happening, Fish and Friends? Welcome to another episode. Tonight, we do have another unboxing, but it's not your typical unboxing. The stuff we're going to be looking at tonight is... Well, a little bit different and cool. Tonight we have another subscribe Fish and Friend unboxing. Of course, I have a P.O. box. Uh, if you all want to send me stuff, some people do as a thank you. Some people send me stuff they want me to try out. Um, just kind of a, a, a gambit of stuff that I get. So I am super blessed and appreciative that people want to send anything into me. So these kind of things are always very special to me. This one is just a little bit different. This unboxing, this is the first box I've actually got something. And I cried. I teared up when I opened this box. Very sentimental to me. Um, super cool. We're going to get to that in a little bit. Enough yapping. Let's get started. Okay, the first box we have here is from my guy, North Fork Fishing. He has his own lure business. Um, I'm going to start doing a thing where instead of, you know, always ordering from Tackle Warehouse, I'm not going to be ordering as much from there this year just because of the amount of stuff that I've been buying. But I want to try to support small businesses, you know, small lure shops, garage baits. I want to do that more. And that's what he does. He's uh, opened up his own crankbait deal. He's making crankbaits. So you know I can appreciate this. I'm a guy who loves to airbrush and paint, but check that out. He's got like a Mega Bass style uh, jerkbait deal here. See there, it's called Slap and Dinks. I guess that's the name of his lure company. That's funny. Uh, but I love that. Love that color, like that sexy shad. It's got the blue chartreuse into that kind of pearlish see-through belly. Great for clear water. A couple of these I'm going to keep for myself, and the rest are going to go in a box uh, or boxes that I'm going to build for some of you out there. Also got another cool pattern here. You can see it's almost like a, a see-through-ish blue crappie pattern to it. See the tops are a little bit darker blue, then it's got the cool crappie pattern through it. Kind of the clear translucent belly. I like that, the look of that a lot. Again, another good clear water lure. You know, when you hold it up to the light, you can see through it real natural, real translucent looking. In the same pattern, just a different lure, a cool little lipless. I like that blank. That's one that I've not seen before. Um, I would say it's, it's a little heavier than a quarter. I'm not sure the weight on it, but cool looking little lipless there. Again, that white and blue kind of crappie looking pattern. I dig it. Check out this dude, love that little blank. I don't even know what these are. I think it's supposed to mimic like a Mega Bass deal. I actually got some of these the other day. Check that dude out. Love the top, it's kind of got that crackly look to it. The chartreuse, pearl belly, cool, very natural looking. It's got the green eyes on it. You know, no crazy obnoxious colors. Good for kind of stained water there. I like that little dude a lot. I'm excited to, to test this one out. I think this one I'll have to keep and Give it a test and see how that dude runs. And my personal favorite of the batch, look at that, a little 1.0 crankbait, almost looking like a, a pumpkin seed type deal there pattern. Very natural, very cool. I guarantee this is gonna slay in some of the shallow ponds around here, but it's a little 1.0 crankbait, so even smaller than like your, your 1.5s. Small, great for little, you know, small waters where they've got little bluegill and stuff. Super excited about that one. So North Fork Fishing, I'll link everybody down below who has products and stuff so you can check them out. But thank you, sir. I appreciate those. Okay, next up over here, uh, kind of I showed you a peek of these earlier, are some soft plastics from my guy, Chris. Chris is a good dude. You've seen me use his plastics before, and he's sent plastics like this into my channel before. Now, what's cool about these is he says, hey, man, I've been, uh, I've been making some plastics. You can see this is like a watermelon with like merged with the purple. Really cool color, I like that. It's kind of a two-tone purple. Oh, it's got even purple flake in it there. Check that out. It's like a watermelon belly. Super cool color, but he's like, hey man, I've been making some plastics. How about I send you some to do for your giveaways? And I said, well, heck yes, dude, I would love that. So I've got a number of packages of these, some big worms. I threw his big worms last year. I don't know how big these are, but um, threw some of those last year, had some really good success on them. You know, large ribbon tail worm uh, in the summer. A number of different craws in here. You can see here, they kind of have like that shovel shape or kind of a club, I guess, shape, wedge, I guess would probably be the right word. It's the claws, so those claws flutter. So green pumpkin, what else? What are the cool colors you make? Some more of those worms in like a cool plum color. I like that one. These almost look like a kinky beaver. I like those a lot. Those are pretty sweet. Very similar to a kinky beaver. I've had a lot of success on those from Reaction Innovations. So cool looking plastic there. You can use it as a jig trailer or just flipping and pitching it like a, like a Texas rig. Of course, one of my favorites, the old green pumpkin with the chartreuse tip, Sanko. You can never go wrong with those, especially for a beginner. And kind of what my plan with a bunch of these, kind of like a, your brush hog looking deal. 
What my plan is going to be with all of these is to make some different boxes. So I'm going to make some beginner boxes coming up here soon with some of the other uh, lures that folks have given me, some of my own things. But I'm going to reach out to someone, so I'm going to pick the winner beforehand. Kind of strange, I know, but pick the winner, somebody who's, you know, always supporting my channel, always watching, and I'm going to ask them where they fish, you know, somebody who, who could use the tackle, and I'm going to try to kind of tailor a tackle box to that. So if it's small ponds, and I'm going to give my reasoning, what would I use in a small pond? Or, um, you know, some, some clear lakes, you know, lakes are kind of clear, they're not too big, something like that. That's kind of the plan. We'll see what it unfolds into, but that's kind of what I'm looking at. So a bunch of, of plastics from Chris. Chris, thank you so much for sending them into the channel. I appreciate you, sir. Now, let's take a look. Also, something that was sent into the channel by some spokes. Fo spokes? Good Lord, Debo. Some folks over at Spearpoint. They're kind of a, a new brand. I've had a couple people ask me about them, um, and I was kind of surprised when they reached out. They said, hey, um, you know, we've got some hooks and stuff on the market. Would you like to check some out? They said, we'd like to send you some. I said, okay, I'd be happy with that. So I got uh, a few packs of these. Now, what's interesting about their hooks is their hooks are supposed to have, uh, oh, what do they say? Hold on. The hook was designed with the laws of physics in mind. You can see there it's got their uh, their patent V-grip technology. Forces the fish into the V of the hook, which holds the fish in place, delivering increased landing ratio. So that's something I'm kind of interested to check out to see how they do. Now to give you a look, and I'm actually going to rig one up with one of Chris's plastics. You can see here, this happens to be their wide gap three yacht. So you get six in a pack. I'm honestly not sure what they run. I should have looked that up, but again, I'll link them um, and everybody else here down below. So if you're interested in them, you can go you can go look them up. Let's rig one of these up. How many times am I gonna say up? Okay, so three yacht, great for a little stick bait like this. Now they're kind of light wire. I did ask them about that, if they're gonna have any like heavy, um, heavy wire flipping and pitching. They said they are working on some of those to come out here soon, but you can see the shape of the hook there. You can see how it's got a little bit different bend. So what they're saying is once you hook that fish, it's going to kind of force it back down into this little spot and give you an increased hookup ratio. I don't know. Interesting concept. Um, I'm going to have to test these and see if I notice a difference. So just the way I'd rig up a Texas rig, I'm going to put that just past the hook barb. I'm going to come through the side, do the old one, two, whip -a And I'm going to measure. Now, one thing I like about these is you can see the hook point is just barely above the eye of the hook. Now, when these are directly in line, some people don't like an EWG hook because they feel you have a, a less, less hookup ratio. I can't even think of the word. Less good, better hookup ratio. That's why some folks will go to like a straight J hook, like a flipping hook, uh, because they absolutely believe you'll get a better hookup ratio. I've used EWG hooks for a long time. Um, I think it matters more on how you fight the fish, what kind of combo you're using it on. But let's just see here when I... Okay, that's what we're looking at. So a nice straight presentation there. You can see that bend of that hook kind of fits in the plastic. It's a little bit different to rig up. It's not the normal you know spot you go through, uh, but a good flat. You can see there when you hook the plastic in there, it's tech exposed, which means I'm just hooking the the, uh, the point of that hook into the plastic to keep it nice and weedless. So that's what you're looking at. The spear point hooks, they look good. Um, not a super heavy wire, so this would be great if you like to throw it on uh, a little bit lighter tackle. Um, with a little bit smaller wire hook like this, you're going to get better hook penetration. It's going to come through easier with a lighter rod. Um, you know, if I had a real big thick hook on here, a heavier gauge, and was trying to set that hook with a, a lesser power rod, you're just not going to get that hook setting power. You're not going to be able to drive that thicker hook through. So I like those EWGs. What else did they throw in to try? They also threw in some 2 aught, so just a little bit smaller. Some 4 aught, so a little bit larger. Ooh, also the bigger 5 aught. You can see that's just a little bit stouter wire there on those. I like that. I like this. They also sent me some of their finesse hooks. That's a 2 aught. That's a little bit big. But um, what I think you could use these for, and depending on the point, I think these would work well for a wacky rig. And the way that hook's set up, I think it might kind of help keep that wacky rig down in that little V point. Do I have a wacky rig here? Oh golly, I do. So this is what I mean. This is your regular um, VMC Nico hook. You can see how that's round, so that can just kind of slide wherever. Sometimes it ends up up here and stuff. Oh, I like the look of that. I might even go with a two-op for this, just a little bit bigger hook, but you can see how the point is here. These finesse hooks, I think these are more to be used as like a drop shot hook. You can see how it's kind of in line with it. That hook is right there, so it would hang like this up a drop shot, which is great, but Kind of a, as a finesse hook like this, I wonder how well it would work with a wacky rig. I like that it kind of holds it right there in that V spot. It just kind of runs right down to that. So that's pretty interesting. I don't know. We're going to have to try these out. Um, I really appreciate those guys sending some hooks over. Even a little number three there. Perfect like for a little finesse drop shot setup. 
Pretty cool. Comment below and let me know if you've used them, um, what you think of them. I'm interested to try it out. You never know until you, you know, kind of go outside the box and with a hook like that, if you're getting a better hookup ratio, heck yeah, I'm, I'm about to try it. Oh, they also sent me a hat too. Thank you guys for sending the hat. Uh, the hat is very comfy. Okay, next up a bag I got from the guys over at Midwest Warriors. So this is a gentleman and his son, um, you know, making garages out of their baits, making garages out of their baits, making garages out of their baits. Very cool. They're a, a veteran owned company. They make all kinds of stuff. So you can see there, I got a spinner bait from them. I got some crank baits, all kinds of cool stuff, but very nice dudes. Uh, they're here in Iowa over in Bedford, Iowa. So a couple hours away from me, but I hopped on a video call with them. Very nice, very humble, great guys. Um, and it's really cool that it's him and his son making baits in their, their garage doing some cool stuff. So you can see here, this is a 3 8 ounce spinner bait. And this comes in like a box. Oh, I like the blade there too. They got kind of that almost clown looking uh, blade color there. Uh, but they're trying to do kind of their own, you know, like mystery tackle box type deal. Um, they're made to order, so you can kind of let them know what you're fishing, where you're fishing. Um, there's a, they've got a phone number here. I'll put that uh, down below in case you want to contact them. But they take orders, so it's really cool to be able to support, um, you know, some smaller businesses, especially for my local Iowa guys. Making some Ned rigs there, purplish orange flake in it. Be great for some clear waters around here. I bet it would be great for some streams, you know, river fishing. Cool little Ned rig look there. I like that one. They threw in a 3 8 ounce chatterbait. I like the looks of that dude right there. That's very bluegilly looking, isn't it? See, it's got the gold, kind of brass gold looking blade. It's got the green and chartreuse head. I don't know what the hooks are, but those are good and sharp. So, you know, your normal chatterbait. I like the looks of that dude a lot. Very neat. Uh, his son, I was talking to him, uh, he loves to paint crankbaits. So check that out. Love that bluegill look. He did very good. Good work on that one, man. Love that color. I appreciate uh, anybody that's doing their own bait making, obviously, especially the, uh, the crankbait painting just for how much work goes into it. You don't realize, you know, painting a few crankbaits, what, what really goes into that. But uh, that's a very cool, very, very neat bluegill pattern there. I like that, dude. He did a 2.5 size in the bass. I like that. You can see kind of the gold accents. It's got the bass, you know, dotting lateral line. Very neat, good work on that, man. Let's see, threw in a swim jig. Now this is a three quarter ounce for us. So I know for you bank guys, that's probably a little bit heavy, but um, if you're fishing in the river and stuff, this dude would do great. Good sharp hook on it. I like that they put the flashaboo, that kind of flashy stuff in there too. Cool. I like the uh, the chartreuse head as well. Some one fourth ounce Ned heads and that chartreuse looking cool. And last, he said he threw in a special surprise for me because all of these I'm actually going to give away to all of you. So I'm going to be doing a special box on all of this soon. Everything that you've seen in the package is going to all of you except this. There's no way I'm giving this one away. You all know. Well, heck, I even have the shirt on. Hawk basketball, they're doing great this year. Check this out, he made me a spinner just for me, and look at that. Colorado blade, black and chartreuse, and it's got a freaking hawk on it! Love it, that dude is going up in the collection. I don't even think I could fish it. Good sharp hook, black and chartreuse with that big Colorado thump, I guarantee that would do great in some muddy waters around here, but thank you so much. The guys over at Midwest Warriors, great dudes. Like I said, I'll link their stuff down below. Um, you can certainly contact them on Facebook. Um, they've got a phone number there as well. I'll link that. Um, you can get your own kind of custom mystery tackle box from those dudes. Very neat. Okay, next up from my dude Andre. He wrote me a letter and said, this is a gift from myself and my wife. She makes this for me and a couple of my friends. Um, he loves the channel. Merry Christmas. Very nice guy. I've talked to him before. Check these out. Remember how I always talk about those bait wraps? His wife actually makes them. And she does it the right way because the Velcro goes all the way around. Some of them I've used where the Velcro like stops here and it would stop here. So this is all open and this like slides up and down your rod. But the way this works is, let's see, do I have an extra here? None with the... I'm gonna steal this guy from behind me. But what's gonna happen is you can see there the exposed hook. Great, these are great for uh, treble hook lures. You just put this over it like so and you close the Velcro. So then you've got your lure in there all closed up. You don't have to worry about grabbing a hook point or anything. That's so cool. Thank you, man, very much for sending me those. He actually sent one for me, uh, and the other was for Rand Dizzle. Very nice of you, sir. He said, P.S., the wife's company on Instagram is Siren Couture. So I don't know what all she sells. I'm guessing uh, probably clothing and stuff. Looks like she's got some very nice stitching skills. But, heck, anytime uh, you can commandeer some of your wife's materials and have her make you some sweet fish and stuff, 
I'm all down for that. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate that a lot. And thank you to your wife for making those and sending them. This was from my guy, Epic Eric. So he's a gentleman that I met through Baxter the Bateman. Very nice, very humble, cool guy. Um, he's got something that he calls the Bass Lab, where he's creating lures, and he's like a lure nerd and junkie. Serious Angler, if you guys, if you watch me over on their podcast, um, he was on, I think, a couple before me. Uh, but man, the amount of baits he has behind him. Look him up on Instagram, Epic Eric. Very nice guy, but I saw he has these, and he says these are kind of an OG uh, in his bait lab. So I asked him if I could buy a couple off him, and by golly, he was nice enough to send me some. Check out these. So he calls this the shaky jig worm. He says it's one of his Bass Lab OG creations. So you've got your uh, regular, you know, kind of shaky head look here. It's nice because it's got that line tie that's just a little bit recessed up into the jig head. Super sharp hook on it. Does he say what they are? No, I think he sent me what it was. I think they're gammy hooks, if I remember right. Um, ultra sharp. You can see he's got some of that flashaboo on it and the little tiny strands, a few strands of rubber, and the hair at the top. So this thing's going to look wild underwater. You let that sink down to the bottom and in the water, that's just going to be doing all sorts of undulating without even moving it. Very natural look. And I actually had somebody talk to me about that the other day. They said, well, hair doesn't look natural underwater. What? It's not like there's a bunch of drowned rats underwater. No, but hair on like a craw. You know, their antennas just kind of move in the water. Fish fins just barely undulate underwater. It's just a, a natural, subtle movement when you're not even moving the bait as opposed to throwing out an Alabama rig or a big huge spinner bait. You know, there's not really anything in the water that looks like those. There's a lot of flashing and craziness. So just a very subtle, cool look. That purple is neat. And the way he rigs it is he puts a worm on there, rigs that worm weedless, throws that like a shaky head. So it's like a finesse jig mixed with a shaky head. Super, super cool. That purple color, he's got like your summer cross. So it's got like your uh, green pumpkin, chartreuse on the bottom. And again, it's got that kind of uh, chartreuse flash boo on it. He hand ties all these. He puts all the, the fur feather looking stuff on it. All hand tied by him. So freaking cool. I cannot wait to try those babies out. These are one eighth ounce. I think that'll do well for me. Suppose you could almost call that like your Rayburn Red. It's got some red on the front, some orange on it, a little bit of black. Man, that dude looks nasty. You imagine that sitting on the bottom. These are just kind of doing their thing. Got a floating worm on it. Woo! Love them. So Eric, thank you so much for sending those over to me and thanks for having a sense of humor. He wrote on there that his cat Mango did that. Apparently bit a couple holes in the box. I appreciate that. It just adds character. But thank you so much for allowing me to buy a couple. Super neat. Okay, last but certainly not least. This one I saved because this is the most emotional I've ever been opening a box. I actually cried. I teared up when I opened this box when I saw this. Now you might know those colors. I start turning it this way a little bit more. You might know. You know that hat? You recognize that? If you don't recognize the hat, how about that signature? Couldn't believe it when I opened the box and saw that. This gentleman, he said, don't name my name or anything. I just wanted to send this to you because I appreciate it. But uh, since some soft plastics, I'm going to show you those from a local shop in Arlington, Tennessee. He said, I also heard you say once that Bill Dance was someone who you grew up watching, somebody that I look to as a, a fishing idol, absolutely. He said, my dad, my uncle, and I would fish ever or would watch him every Saturday afternoon. Thanks for the great channel. I actually talked to him afterwards, and he said, and this is what choked me up even more, um, that he and his dad and his uncle, uh, you know, obviously being down in Tennessee, they each had one of these. His father passed away. He took his dad's hat, and he hit, sent his own hat that he had to me. Freaking crazy. When he told me that story, I teared up. I am a dad of two girls, so I'm a little bit more emotional now than I used to be, but sending me a Bill Dance autographed hat of his. And it looks like it's one that he wore. Like it looks like an actual worn Bill Dance hat. It even looks to be uh, to be bent to the way that Bill would use it. So flipping cool. Thank you so much, man. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate this. This is gonna go in a case, um, go up here in my, my new tackle. I don't, did I even tell you? I didn't even address this, I'm sorry. My old lady had the, uh, the itch up her leg to go ahead and rearrange things. Uh, and she rearranged all my fishing stuff over here in this corner of the basement by my computer. So when I do live streams, it's not going to look like I'm living in my mom's basement. So, honey, thank you so much for moving everything. I love it over here. I've got my own, like, part of the basement. My girls leave me alone. They're over there doing their thing on the, their play side. The, the lighting looks a little bit better over here. I might look a little handsomer over here. I don't know. It would take a lot of light to make me look handsome. But, honey, thanks for uh, moving it. I've got a bunch of crap 
gathered and stacked around. It's going to be kind of hell because I had just organized some of it over there. Now I've got to reorganize, but maybe I'll take you all through a walkthrough of it when I get it done. Okay, so the plastic. This is a place called Primary Tackle Co. You can see there, that's the stuff he was talking about. It's not salt. It's a crawfish attractant, apparently, that they use. This one, I love it. That reminds me of some of the old school little craws that I used to have. I'm going to try these guys, kind of like a green pumpkinish chartreuse. I'm going to try some of these on some finesse chips. This might even look cool on that shaky head. Ooh, yeah, they definitely have a ooh, stink to them. Actually, actually it's kind of good. Mm. What else was in here? Of course, some uh, some Sankos. Those are almost like a big Ned Rick looking deal. They kind of have that Ned look to them. Ooh, I like that color, that finesse color green pumpkin with like red and purple flake. Now these are cool. They call these the four inch claw bug. I like that. That almost looks like the old Berkeley. What was that? I forget the name of that craw. It looks similar to this, kind of those big long appendages, except it didn't have the clubs on it. They were like flat. These actually have the little, that little wedge kind of club deal. So those, uh, those claws should flap. I like the look of that. Black with like a, a glittery blue on the bottom. We have those black and blue uh, craws around here. So that's another one I'm going to keep. I appreciate you so much. Um, Sending me the hat and everything was way too much, but I, I appreciate it. We talked afterwards, and great, great guy. All right, Fisher friends, that's going to do it for me tonight. Comment below and let me know what you're the most excited to see me throw. If you want to see me throw that old Hawkeye Lure, Hawkeye Lure Challenge, I bet my buddy Matt out there is screeching. He's an Iowa State fan. Sorry, bud, but no, I like those colors better. Maybe that little finesse crankbait. Old Randizzle likes to go down to the river. Maybe we can find some spots where we can throw some smaller finesse cranks and do a video on those. I love, love the colors on that. Comment below and let me know what you're the most excited to see. Or, heck, maybe even if you teared up a little bit, that is that is just too dang cool. Thank you so much, man. But tonight's subscribe feature friend is everybody that sent me stuff tonight. I named you off. I cannot thank you all enough. Like I said, I am humbled anytime anybody wants to send anything uh, and lures like this, you know, to give to other people, my guy Chris. Thank you all so much. I appreciate it a ton. I'm going to have some more of these coming soon. Like I said, I'm going to try to buy uh, some more lures from smaller businesses, do some unboxing, some stuff that you just don't see every day. But uh, that's it for me. I've got to edit. So uh, enough talking. Thank you all so much for watching. And until next time.